Hey guys, this is kind of a short video. And yes, I did convert my second mill, mini mill, over to full CNC. And so this is going to be a multiple part type series and I'm going to do this backwards. I'm going to give you a sampling of the final uh, completed work. So I'll show actually running the machine and then the next few videos I'll show making the parts. Here's how, how or uh, yeah, how I guess I made uh, motor mounts, stepper mounts for the x-axis, the y and then the last one will be the Z. Um, so I'm pretty happy with it. Um, not sure. This is going to be all kinds of crazy, uh, not really fluid type video and work because I haven't done it before. So I'm just taping as I'm figuring things out live. So hope you enjoy and um, see you next time. Sorry about the lighting guys, it turned cold again, so uh, kind of glary, I know. Um, what to say, uh, took a long time to get here. Um, be happy to help anybody with this kind of setup. Um, like I said, it took months and months to get this working. Um, Mach 3, very <laughs> difficult program to work with. I got the motors tuned. I'll be documenting everything, so if anybody wants to try this, they're welcome to it. Um, so, and I even have the axes calibrated. Um, still need to do an e-stop. I'd like to put limit switches on it. Um, what else? Well, yeah, heat stop. I want everything to go. So I might design something that just cuts power to everything so it's dead. Uh, probably should put a relay on the spindle. I think you can actually set an RPM and then turn it on and the spindle goes. I don't have it plugged in right now. But um, it enclose the whole thing because the big thing about the mill is I never want to use it because of the big mess it makes. So push come to shove I can do manual stuff. You know if it's enclosed I can sit here on the computer and machine the part just telling it what to do. Um, also a big problem here because inches and millimeters um, you're supposed to run Linux CNC to talk to Mach 3. I can't yet figure out how to get Linux CNC to generate inches so it switches this over to millimeters and then your soft limits that I have in place are <laughs> in millimeters and it stays there but then i'd want to run inches i mean it just goes back and forth incredibly ridiculously complicated to do oh i got a lot of junk i like to get my touch dro back up on this the hardware died so i need to get another board but um i can um, rather than doing it here i've got a remote connection so i'm behind the camera here just running this thing um what do we want? I want the head to go to the right. So there. So there, I've got that all tuned up. Works nice. Axis is very smooth. The same way with the Y axis. I can be. Yeah, still got a little bit of work to do on it, I guess. I don't know why. Oh, I know why. It's a coupling. So I got a machine coupling differently. And Z, too. Now to make that work, that's a 100 to 1 transmission in there. I can hit, uh, go to zero, so everybody rehomes themselves. He goes, yep, there goes the head. The axis is where it's zeroed, so it knows where home is. <laughs> and it's funky too, because you can see eight. I, I mean, this program, I think, is flaky. Sometimes it goes to zero, sometimes it stops and says I'm at eight. I told it to go to zero. So, I'm just about to zero that now. Now move, uh, what is that? That's Y. So I want to move the head to the right. Yeah, that's the other thing is, oh yeah, there you can do it. All right, now go to zero. Should we zero that? Okay, that would, <laughs> I was supposed to do Y, dummy. Uh, I want, which way? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why it does that. 
always on the start. Now go to zero. 18 cents. See, it's reading millimeters right now. Now it's zeroed out rather than being at eight. So it's random. I don't get some of these little weird quarks in this. But like I said, um, got it pretty much so tuned up and whatever. I mean, <laughs> so now I know it's going to be a long time before I actually show a video here of machining something. First thing I want to do, yeah, I get, yeah. I also, I guess I want to try engraving. That'll be the actual first thing I'm going to try doing. So, hope you enjoyed watching. I just wanted to um, sum some stuff up here before I show the next piece of this uh, video of it actually machining something. And the reason for it is I've seen a lot of videos of people converting their mini mill over to CNC and they only go as far as okay they've got all the axes moving but I never see them actually take it kind of to the next level so I am using FreeCAD for my designs I've showed other videos on that and how it works and I'm using the Linux CNC post processor in it which is supposedly what um, Mach 3 understands so it's all compatible uh, have, again I haven't done a whole lot of work so I don't know about the compatibility or what it just seems to be working so far um, Mach 3 I don't know whether I'm doing something wrong or it's got bugs like crazy in it um, for instance I'll move the XY table to a spot you can see it's all zeroed out. I'll hit go to zero and it moves. It looks like it's moving to the right spot, but one of these guys or maybe all of them or whatever won't be reading zero, which I just don't understand. Uh, try it right now and see. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. All right, so I'll take Z up a little bit and I'll take uh, X over a little bit. Yeah, come on. Where? There we go. Okay, so now if I hit, numbers are off, if I hit go to zero, and I did realize you can program it to move the head up before it moves the table. So there, moves the head up, moves the table, and puts it right back. There you go. Eight tenths of a thou on X. It should be reading zero. I've seen it do that a lot. Go to machine coordinates, it reads the same thing yep exact same thing so I don't understand I had it all zeroed I hit reference all to home so I hit zero here hit zero here and then you hit reference all to home and it moves right back so and I can do it one more time and it won't move back so I mean is this something I'm doing wrong anybody know this program there see now it's all saying zero reference to home um, so, I don't know, um, I wish there was a different platform, but um, I already paid for this guy, it's license registered. Um, what else can I say? So, yeah, uh, FreeCAD does the designs, I feed it to this guy, oh, that's what I wanted to do, heads up on this. I'm using the Sane Smart 4-axis CNC controller little microchip on it or whatever um, and this is a Windows 7 laptop Windows 7 will talk to it I have this guy here which is a Windows 8 tablet it will not it will Windows 7 runs Mach 3 Windows 8 runs Mach 3 I don't have a 10 machine but 7 will talk to the same smart card Windows 8 will not talk to the same smart card. I really want to use this laptop because it's touch screen. If I can open it. It's touch screen and I can remove the keyboard. The top just comes off. I can mount it up someplace out of the way. I can transfer my job to it wirelessly from my desktop and then just hit go. So 
I can do all the jogging and whatnot with it. But so that's the heads up. If you're going to get the Sane Smart 4 axis, you have to run it on Windows 7. And I think they advertise it on 10, but I don't have 10. I want to run it on 8, and they haven't been able to help me yet. I understand they do advertise 7, 8, and 10 for their, I think it's a 6 axis card, which I think is actually cheaper. This was like $60, and the other one's 40 so I may wind up doing that eventually. Again, I didn't want to spend a whole lot of money to get to see if I can do this, you know, proof of concept. Still, once I start doing some stuff and I know I have a confidence level that this will fly, then I may wind up getting the other Sane Smart card. Um, I'll put links in the description to some of this stuff and then like I said I think I think it's I don't know how much I'm repeating myself here but um, so I guess let me show you this actually running and milling something under control already had in FreeCAD a pocket design small one for testing working without an e-stop dangerous but uh, It's doing it. <laughs> Pretty cool. It's doing it. Wow. Nice edges too on it, I'll tell you that. A quarter inch carbide, two flute, bottom center cutting, and no. I don't know why it's not clearing this other stuff out yet, but I didn't pay attention to the step over. I think it was set for 100%, but uh, I don't know. I can definitely engrave text with this huge bit, but a whole new world for me. This is great. I'm going to put more light on it. I got another light over here. Ow. Get rid of the shadow, huh? There. <laughs> is that glary for you guys? Yeah, looking in the camera. There, a little bit better. Interesting, huh? I forgot how deep I told it to go. It's, this would definitely work on uh, aluminum and stuff. You figured, you know, first run, do it with wood. And it goes wrong. Stepping down ten thousands at a time, if I remember right. I gotta measure it too. That was, oh yeah, I gotta go back to the drawing and see if, if it's making it the right size. It's still weird that it didn't cut every, oh yeah, the step over, I guess I had wrong or something. That's why it's not, uh oh, heard a noise in the Y axis. Still have to fix that. That is crazy. Oh well. <laughs> 